When you're improving the performance of your code, you often focus on a particular part of your application. And that particular part often happens to start at a particular call stack. Here I've profiled the Java compiler as it compiles a Java source file. The Java compiler has two main phases. It parses the Java source code and builds the AST, and then it compiles it to Java bytecode. And these two phases start at these two methods here, enter trees and compile to. Let's say we're working on speeding up the compilation phase. To find performance bottlenecks in complex call trees, we usually look at the hotspots view. The problem is just that hotspots are calculated from the entire call tree. So in this case, together, from the parsing and the compilation phases. At the top of the list of the hotspots, we can see a jar file constructor. Jar file opening, that surely has got to do something with the parsing phase and not with the compilation phase. So the hotspots are actually pretty useless for our analysis. That's why JProfiler has functionality that allows you to only work with a certain part of the call tree. Let's see how this is done. In the call tree, we select the root call stack that we're interested in, which is compiled to in this case. We right click it and then select set as root from the context menu. The header area now shows you the call tree root that we've selected. And it also gives you a way to remove it again. If it were just for the call tree, this feature would not be so interesting. It basically shows you the same information as before, just without the distraction of the call tree prefix and the surrounding call tree. Its real value becomes apparent when you switch to the hotspots view. Now the list of hotspots has been calculated only for that part of the call tree that starts with the selected call tree root. The jar file stuff is all gone, and we can see that apparently string format is an expensive operation in the compilation phase, taking up 4% of the total time. To remove the call tree root, we could use this button here, but we can also go to the call tree view and use the call tree history to go one step back in the history of parameter changes and hyperlinks. Call tree roots also work for higher aggregation levels. Let's switch to the classes aggregation level and set a root for the class reader here. When we go to the hotspots view, we select the check class and then switch to the call graph. As you can see, the call graph, just like the hotspots view, also respects the call tree root that we configured in the call tree view. If you create a new graph right here in this view, you get a checkbox on the first step of the wizard that lets you decide if that's what you want or not. Let's check out how the call graph would look like without the call tree root. To do that, we go to the hotspots view, remove the call tree root, select the check class again, and generate the call graph. And indeed, instead of the previous 10 invocations, we now have a couple of thousand here. So as you can see, the ability to work with a subset of the call tree in the hotspots view and the call graph makes a huge difference if you don't want to analyze everything but just a part of your application.